Um, so um, without any further ado, we're a little tiny bit ahead of schedule, but I'm out of welcoming things to say. So I thought I'd turn it over to some of our board members um, and we will talk about who we are a little bit and also what we've been up to. So it's a big updates kind of talk and also the state of Kentucky plant conservation. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Tara Littlefield, which she's our KNPS president. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. And um, I'll reiterate, this is super exciting. Um, this is the first Zoom symposium conference that I've been involved in, in organizing. Um, and I'm really, love it then a lot of people have their screens on the videos i can see people's faces it's really exciting we've been a little people deprived this year um so that's really exciting um so welcome uh kentucky botany community and beyond i'm tara littlefield and i am very excited about everyone joining us for this cool event that highlights some of the botany projects that are going on right now across our state so just a little bit of background on Kentucky Native Plant Society. We are an organization, um, a nonprofit statewide organization whose mission is to promote education, preservation, and protection of native plants and natural communities. Um, before I go on to that, because I'm kind of new at this, I realized that I was supposed to have shared my screen. Um, and I cannot see see the screen share now, Jen. Oh, there it is. It's on the bottom. Okay. So people who know me know that I love to say for the love of Kentucky plants a lot. Um, uh, so uh, this is my cover slide, a bunch of uh, plants that um, are really uh, important uh, to me. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll start this again now that I've got my screen. Everyone can see my screen? Okay. So this event is organized by the Kentucky Native Plant Society. So we are a nonprofit statewide organization whose mission is to promote education, preservation, and protection of native plants and natural communities. So we work on accomplishing this mission through efforts involving native plant education and outreach, supporting native plant research, supporting rare plant conservation, appreciating natural communities, and encouraging the appropriate use of native plants in, in gardens and restoration projects. So the intent of this symposium is to bring people together, professionals, academics, citizen scientists, and actively discuss current topics and projects that are occurring across the state. And use this as a way of creating an interconnected network of plant people partners of supporters that can help us tackle some of these issues we face in order to ensure that the native plants of Kentucky and beyond are here for generations to come. So we all we all love plants. We all want them to be around for a long time. So we're also really excited to hear from Dr. Alan Weekly, um, our keynote speaker who will be discussing plant diversity in the southeast conservation and future uh, resources and current resources for plant knowledge. So, who are we? Um, so the Native Plant Society has been around since 1986. Um, next year will be our 35th anniversary. So that's a really long, uh, a really long standing organization. Um, the folks that are members of the Kentucky Native Plant Society, um, I mentioned this already, we're academics, professionals, citizen scientists, gardeners. We all share love of plants. So I've been involved with the Native Plant Society for about 17 years. Um, I first started out leading hikes um, at, at our spring wildflower weekend. Um, I have uh, served many roles, um, a few roles over the years. Um, and for this past term, 2018 to 2020, I've been um, the, the current president. But I'm also uh, a, a, pro a professional botanist, a heritage botanist, and plant conservation manager at the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves. Um, and so a lot of the talks that you'll hear here, here today are, um, are folks from, from Nature Preserves in our plant conservation section. 
So our other volunteer executive committee members include Vice President Heidi Braunreiter, who is also a nature preserve botanist, Secretary Emily Ellingson, who is the native plants curator at the UK Arboretum and Botanical Garden, and Treasurer Bill Edwards, who's a local botanist, um, longstanding member. Um, you can see the photos here. I don't know if you can see my little pointer here, but um, Everyone was really good about sending in photos except for Bill. So Bill may or may not be a cowboy on a horse, um, but that's what you get when you don't send in your bios or your pics for our website. Um, but he's our longstanding treasure. He's been our treasure for about a decade. Um, our other volunteer, um, or, um, our board members um, include Dr. Jen Koslow, I don't think you really gave an introduction to yourself, Jen. Um, Jen uh, is a plant ecologist from, um, and teaches at the Eastern Kentucky University. David Taylor, um, he's uh, on our board as well. He's uh, the botanist at the Daniel Boone National Forest. Deborah White, a consultant botanist and um, former Nature Preserve botanist. Wes Cunningham, who's also a consultant botanist and uh, Last but certainly not least, Jeff Nelson, um, who's a local uh, botanist out in Western Kentucky um, and longstanding member. And I wanted to give an additional shout out uh, to Jeff Nelson of uh, thanks, um, who he is also our webmaster and our social media Facebook admin. Um, and we could not do what we do without Jeff um, and certainly all of our other board and uh, executive committee members. Also wanted to give a shout out to Susan Harkins and, and Nick uh, Koenig, um, who are our Lady, Slip, Lady Slipper newsletter editors. And so you'll hear more from, um, from them and more about our newsletter and our website in a little bit. So in the beginning of the year, um, it started out with a lot of promise. Uh, Jeff Nelson led efforts with the Native Plant Society to begin a strategic planning process back in February. We had a lot of interest in attendance um, up here in the in the right corner. That's we met at Bernheim in person. So this was um, obviously before um, COVID hit. Um, so that was really great. Lots of momentum. And in early March, uh, several Native Plant Society members and nature preserve folks. Uh, went down to the uh, Partners for Plant Conservation meeting um, in Georgia back in early March. And we were really excited to learn and collaborate with our many Southeastern partners on many topics similar to the talks you'll see today. So of course we didn't plan for the global pandemic uh, in our strategic planning. And a lot of the things that we were planning this year, um, we had to adjust our plans and put a lot of things on hold like a lot of the uh the world um we normally host an annual wildflower weekend in the in the spring and that's for the, the public we have uh, hikes workshops fall meetings or symposiums but of course um, those were kind of um, shelved to the side as priorities shifted this year so i feel like there might be a slide missing um but I guess I wanted to say, despite these changes, we were really lucky to still accomplish several goals through the Native Plant Society this past year, uh, including revamping our, our newsletter, and we were able to award some grants. Um, much of my time was spent at my job at Nature Preserves conducting field work, and so many virtual meetings, um, a lot of virtual meetings. I live out in the country with bad internet, so it was, uh, it was touchy at best, but we got through it. Um, and of course, I've got small children. This year, I became a full-time teacher, um, as well as a, a full-time uh, professional botanist of, of what I've always been. So um, I realized that you can't really function um, with little sleep, uh, possibly half the time. I also learned that my daughter is now at the age where she can be an actual field assistant. So she's eight. Um, so we, we did a lot of uh, field work together in the spring and the summer. And so that was actually really exciting. Um, she was my assistant on the Trillium Pusillum status surveys that I did back in the spring. And I would check up on rare plants and she would try to catch critters like salamanders and amphibians and things like that. 
So just real quick, some native plant statistics. We've got a really diverse state from the Cumberland Mountains in the east to the swamps in the west. Um, a lot of cool natural areas in between that you're going to hear about in a lot of our talks. Um, we have over 2,400 native plants, 434 non-native or um, non-vascular plants, and now over 80 described natural communities, thanks to recent efforts by Martina Hines, who's an ecologist at Nature Preserves, along with some other biologists. There has uh, been new lichen survey work conducted um, by Dr. Risk and Nature Preserve staff, Kendall McDonald. So we're really excited about that. Just uh, over 50 new state records have been described recently, or have been discovered recently. And we're still finding new species uh, unknown to science in the state. So how cool is that? Um, our, uh, of course, our floral diversity is declining in many areas. And we've all heard uh, development and habitat loss and invasive species and kind of a, that, that doom and gloom scenario that kind of creeps up in our daily lives. 25% uh, of our flora is, is rare um, or listed. Uh, globally, it's much worse with two-fifths of the plants at risk of extinction. Um, but I tend not to focus on negative stats, and I like to think about ways that we can improve the situation. And I really like nerdy botanical um, memes, apparently. <laughs> so at the very least, we can all work together. Uh, and try to accomplish um, our goals of conserving our flora together. So teamwork and partnerships. I feel like that's happening. Uh, we've increased new memberships, new partnerships and connections, and um, they're, they're being made in strides um, in the realm of plant conservation in particular. I've been particularly amazed at the influx of the next generation of plant enthusiasts. Um, the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves has increased focus these past few years on plant conservation efforts with our newly formed plant conservation sections. We now have seven staff running around um, doing botanical work and coordinating really important conservation projects around the state. We even had our first uh, intern this past semester, Elijah Hicks, who was working on conservation projects in the Red River Gorge. So I'll touch real quick on uh, just a few of, uh, of Native Plant Society's initiatives. Um, we love iNaturalist. It's been, it's been a really big hit, and I know that in several of the talks, you'll be hearing about some of the cool things that, um, that were found through iNaturalist. But in 2019, we started the Kentucky Botanist Big Year. And so this is a really good tool to use if you like to make life lists. Um, and, uh, and, and, it, and it's a great own personal database. I use it um, as my own personal database as I travel around the country um, and in Kentucky as well. So um, this year, the event is still ongoing, but last year we gave out coffee mugs and you see Kendall over here in the corner with her coffee mug. Um, we um, gave out uh, prizes to the most identified, most observed, and most species. Um, so that's, 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 that's just such a really neat tool. And um, we're still discovering new things on iNaturalist and, and creating new projects. So, so please, I encourage you to get, um, if you are on iNaturalist, uh, get on, our, on some of our projects and, and, and get involved. So I'll also mention our new um, citizen sciences program that we're working on um, with the Native Plant Society. So Nature Preserves has been involved in white-haired goldenrod conservation in the Red River Gorge for several decades. Um, and we're working with the Forest Service to create a volunteer citizen scientist program to monitor the white-haired goldenrod, along with other species in the sandstone rock houses. So this program um, will start for the next, next year's field season in 2021. And it'll involve some training that we're developing right now, but we need Native Plant Society's help. So if you um, go to the gorge um, and you want to adopt one of our rock shelters, um, please reach out to us. We're, we're looking for um, next year's uh, recruitment of volunteers um, for this pilot program. So we're hoping that this program will be a longstanding program. So, so please reach out if you want to get involved. And I just wanted to mention um, what I've noticed this past year and also what I've been doing at my own house. There's just been 
an increased, uh, it seems, uh, interest in, in native plant gardening. I think it's always been there, but I think that uh, the, uh, the COVID has forced people at home, and, and I've talked to uh, native plant nurseries who have mentioned to me that, that sales were actually up this past year. Um, so um, I just think that's, that's really cool. Um, we got a lot of requests with Native Plant Society. Where do I buy native plants? So at um, the beginning of the year, we spent some time revamping our lists on the website. Um, so they're up to date. Please check them. If you're a native plant nursery, make sure that you're on there and reach out to us if um, you're not and you need to uh, get added to our list. But um, I've enjoyed also um, watching on Facebook the increase in seed exchange events this past year, particularly in the Louisville area where one group started a native plant seed exchange group that quickly grew over to 100 folks actively networked to exchange native seed for native plant gardens. Um, and Native Plant Society last year even held our, our first seed exchange event. So um, one of our tasks, um, um, some of our board members are working on policies and guidance for some of these seed exchanges that we think Native Plant Society can be a valuable resource and possibly serve to connect um, these resources for local restoration projects as well. So um, with that, I will turn it over um, back to Jen and she will give an uh, overview of our grants program. Hi again, everybody. Um, we are really proud of our grants program. Um, you can see that it's not it's not a massive program, but it also has supported a lot of students over the years. And uh, more on that in just a minute. But um, you can see uh, one of our previous grant recipients has gone on and is still having a career in botany. And I can see that I'm making Heidi just slightly uncomfortable. Sorry, Heidi. <laughs> but um, it's been a great resource over the years. And um, if we look at the next slide, you can get some idea of the types of projects that we have been um, funding. And this is just by numbers, but you can see that there's been a focus on a lot of the things that impact plant conservation. Um, some of it is basic research. Um, such as floras, where you will just learn what is in an area. Some of it is management focused, um, either looking at invasive species or endangered species. Um, we've had pollination biology and then some more basic evolution. Um, and so um, these grants over the years have really just been student grants, but we have um, moved into having more opportunities for people other than just students. Um, and so um, we still have the student grants. <laughs> um, and they have a $250 limit for undergraduates and a $500 limit for graduate students. Um, one of the great things about these grants is that oftentimes one finds it difficult to find a grant that will pay for things like travel. And very often when doing botanical research, travel is the thing that you need money for the most. And so um, those, um, those monies have come in handy for, I know a lot of students, I'm at Eastern Kentucky University, but um, plenty of other places too. And we have new opportunities now, which is super exciting. Um, they are not restricted to students, but they um, fit in really well with our missions, uh, our mission to first understand and um, advocate for native plant conservation. Um, and so we have a native plant inventory grant. You don't have to be a student for that. Um, that has a $250 limit. And then we also have a rare and native plant restoration grant um, and that's really exciting because that's a way that um, we can directly support people propagating plants that are of conservation interest. And it's very, um, it's better if you're interested in that kind of thing, if you coordinate with 
uh, Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves because right now they're serving as the clearing house for all of the information about rare plants. They um, are the seat of the heritage program for our state. Um, so if you are interested in those grants, you should check out our webpage um, and there's a subsection about that there. And um, if you're interested in particular in the restoration grant, um, reach out to um, Tara um, or Heidi in particular so that you can um, put forth a successful proposal. Um, so um, that's really all I have to say about the grants, but I think it's a really great program. Like I said, I've seen it benefit a lot of students so far, and I think it's a great way for us to help also build a network and get more people engaged in the work that needs to be done. And I'm going to turn it over to, this is, uh, is this you, Jeff? Yeah, okay, so Jeff, you are up. <laughs> All so righty. much practice, and here we are. <laughs> Thank you, Jan, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, the, I'm the webmaster as well as being a board member of uh, KNPS. I'm uh, the webmaster. Um, and uh, I know most of you have, have been to our website, have seen the website. Uh, in case you haven't, it's pretty easy to find, knps.org, uh, and you'll see this uh, welcome screen and the, the home page. Um, we have, I think, some, some really good information on the website, but there's always room for improvement. So if anybody's interested in helping out with the website, uh, 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 just shoot an email, or if you have any questions about the website, or actually any questions at all about uh, anything related to uh, KNPS, uh, the email address is uh, kyplants at knps.org, uh, and I just put that in the chat. Uh, window if anybody uh, wants to look that up. So any email, if you're interested in helping on the website, uh, uh, just shoot an email to that address. Also, I help out moderating on the uh, Kentucky Native Plant Society uh, Facebook group uh, that's become, uh, gosh, we've got well over 5,000 members on that group now. And uh, so uh, it's really an exciting place and a good place to answer questions, get IDs. If you see a plant, take a picture of it and just post it there and say, what is this? And usually you get an ID pretty quickly. So uh, uh, that's that. Um, Instagram, uh, we have an Instagram account uh, that is uh, managed by... Uh, uh, Emily Ellingson. Uh, Emily, do you want to pop in for a second and say anything about the Instagram account? Sure. Um, it, the, the handle the, is uh, KY Native Plant Society. Um, haven't been updating it much lately just because of the, the last year we've had. Um, but I'm looking forward to putting more pictures of recommendations or reminders for events and photos uh, and educational materials about all of Kentucky's native plants. All right, thank you. Uh, and let's see, I guess I'll just turn it back over to Tara for a minute. And Okay, I just wanted to reiterate, Jeff mentioned Facebook. Um, you know, Facebook's got a lot of pros and cons. Um, the reason why I use it is because of the large botanical community. Um, and there's, there, it's, there's just so much communication with different plant folks um, across the country and world, but um, particularly in the Southeast. So um, I know that, uh, you know, there's a lot of 
maybe not so good things about Facebook too, but, but I encourage you to, to, to join a lot of these plant groups on Facebook. You'll learn a lot. Um, do, um, Alan Weekly um, has different groups um, that he'll be talking about too. Um, I call them the, the Weeklyites, um, all of the folks that um, are, are um, you know, chatting about plants um, in, in the Southeast. It's, it's, it's just really cool. Um, so I am going to pass it to Nick uh, Koenig so that he could talk about our new Lady Slipper newsletter blog. Thank you, Tara. Uh, I'm not gonna, can you all hear me? Yep. Okay, I don't wanna speak too long, but I just wanted to give a quick update on our numbers recently through the past year. Jeff sent me some data and I went through um, the data and in the past quarter, we've had 4,600 hits on our articles, which is super exciting. And in the past year, we've seen a hit of 12,400, which is super exciting to see that many people reading articles online, especially during, um, Quarantine, I think people are flocking more toward the internet. So um, Susan and I are always looking for more writers. So if you have a special interest that is botanical related, um, we have many different things that we do, special interests um, such as native plant spotlights, book reviews, invasive plant corners, which is just a highlight on an invasive species that grows in our state that teaches people how to identify it all the way to management so they can remove it from their landscape if they would like. Um, and I just wanted to highlight a few of those articles that have really gotten a lot of hits this year. Um, kudos to Susan, Jeff, Dave Taylor, and Tom, um, I'm not sure how to say his last name, um, Kenimer, I'm, I think, but um, the Invasive Plant Corner, uh, the Bush Honeysuckle article had 1900 hits in the past year, which is super exciting to see that many people. And maybe even if just um, 10 of them decided to remove some of it, that's a success in my book. So, um, and then also the, how Can You Save the American Chestnut had 1,600 hits in the past year. And then Planting Trees, We Are Doing It Wrong, had 1,000 hits. So a lot of really great articles that have been written. So I ask anybody if they want to get an article out, there are readers. So a lot of people will be reading your work through the Lady Slipper. So if you would like um, anything published, you can email us. So I will drop our email in the chat and Susan and I get those automatically. So we will get back to you. And we just usually provide little grammatical um, updates if we see any, but then we'll get that posted and we send out a monthly newsletter. So if you'd like to join that, you can go to our website as well to sign up for that newsletter. And there's the email in the chat. Thanks, Nick. Uh, let me just jump in one other thing. Uh, for those of you who've been longtime members, you may know this, but uh, the Lady Slipper has been published since 1986. We've, uh, which is a newsletter of the uh, KNPS. Uh, we're in. This is uh, volume uh, 35th year that uh, it's been published. Uh, at the beginning of uh, 2020, uh, we decided that. Uh, rather than sending out lengthy, long uh, email newsletters, that it would be more appropriate now that we had a website to uh, make the Lady Slipper a blog so that we could post articles whenever somebody's got an article and keep it running. Uh, and then in addition to the blog, then we set up so that all of you who are on our mailing list each month get a digest, which lists the articles published in the previous month, the titles and a brief uh, description of the, uh, 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 of the article. So uh, uh, subscribe to the KNPS uh, uh, newsletter. There's a uh, uh, link on the uh, front page of our website. And in addition to that, the uh, uh, blog itself, we on the website, you'll see on the main menu, there's a link to the Lady Slipper. You can go to the blog. We also have the archives of virtually every uh, article ever published on the, uh, uh, in the Lady Slipper since volume one, 1986. Uh, so it's always fun to kind of browse through those. So uh, 